Evan Smith for FightCornerNews.com here with legendary judge again, uh, Harold Letterman. Uh, what's going on, Harold? Same old, same old. Same old, same we're, old. We're, we're getting ready for the big big uh, trilogy fight in Denver with uh, Mike Alvarado and Brandon Rios. You know, it's the third time they're going to fight. And uh, back in Mike Alvarado's hometown of ice cold Denver, Colorado. Uh, so, you know, looking forward to that next week. Yeah, that's going to be a great one. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a second. But I just want to get, uh, you know, since you're such an experienced judge, you've judged so many fights for so many decades now. Um, and uh, you, you actually played a big role in the Ali Norton fight uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> Obviously, you've been watching me on HBO. They blamed it on me on HBO on ESPN uh, but to tell you the truth yeah it was huge controversy the third fight that I judged uh, you know they had the, the police strike that night and there was you know a uh, whole lot of whole lot of stuff going on that night but uh, it was a very close fight and now he wound up winning the unanimous decision the other judge Barney Smith had it the same way I did eight to seven and Arthur McCanty the scoring referee that night had it eight six one Ali so you know uh, it wasn't only me, I'll put it to you that way, but it was close, it was controversial, and everybody always talks about Ali Norton 3, but, you yeah, know, yeah. what are you going to do? So, I mean, that's uh, just on the topic of controversy. There was a fight a couple weeks ago with other controversy with the Bradley Childers fight, and also just, um, just in general, in the sport of boxing, it seems like, you know, it's amazing how three people, you know, can see the fight three different ways. Can you just tell us about that as, you know, being a judge yourself? Well, I mean, you know, Sometimes it's the pressure, people aren't ready for a huge fight, you know, like the fight that they're judging. Other times is, you know, depends on where they're sitting. You know, the judges sit on three different sides of the ring. A lot of times you get blocked by the referee, you don't see a punch, or if a guy's back is getting in your way, or if the referee's in your way. So, you know, there's all kinds of factors that play into it. But, uh, I, I mean, I've always found that in the high profile fights that people talk about, if they would only assign three judges from anywhere, in other, in other words, not pick three judges from uh, a sanctioning body or, or where they live, like Nevada used to use all Nevada judges in high profile fights, and it's not fair. Rather than go out and find the three best judges for the high profile fights, they used to use all Nevada guys, and they would wind up with a lot of controversial decisions. Uh, I think you could prevent that just by being more selective on who you use. Do you think uh, you know they used to use the referees to judge the fights? Is that is that a good thing that they moved away from that? Right. Uh, I think it is a good thing that the referee doesn't score. The referee's got too much to do. Uh, if he would only do his job correctly, you know, we'd have a lot less injuries in boxing. The referee has to really watch out for the safety of the fighter rather than concentrate on who's winning and who's losing. There's no doubt that, you know, no question that the referee has the best view of the fight. I, I won't argue that point. But I will argue that if the referee is concentrating on the scoring like he should, then, you know, he, he could really miss something that uh, would mean whether a guy lives or dies. And so, you know, it's too important for the referee to, uh, uh, to concentrate on the safety factors and, you know, and let the three judges score the fight. Okay. And just uh, our last point about judging, then we'll get a little bit into the fight, a couple fights here. Uh, just you, you bring such an exuberance to the, uh, you know, to the ring, ring side when you do, you know, the OK Gym, and you know, uh, you know, <laughs> I gotta tell you something like, well, how, what, what, you know, what motivates you to, you know, say those type of things? E easy answer. I love boxing. <laughs> there you go. You know, if you love it as much as I do, and I've been around it a long time, you, uh, you get very enthusiastic about boxing. I, I always do. Okay, great. And so, all right, so let's talk real quick about uh, Mike Alvarado, Brandon Rios. Coming up on the 24th, I believe that's the date. Uh, the rubber match. Rios, you know, not, got the win in the first one. Alvarado outboxed him in the second one. Uh, who's going to win this one? What's, what's good? I, see, you know, I got to keep score, so I'm not going to tell yeah, you who's yeah. going to win because yeah. I don't want people right, saying right, that right. I'm prejudiced right, to one right, side right. or the other. But I got to tell you, Brendan Rios is going to come to fight. He'll try to get on the inside, murder Mike Alvarado with body punches, and then try and stop him again. Mike Alvarado, on the other hand, has got a box. He really can't stand there and slug. Uh, his biggest problem is that he gets drawn into slugging matches, and you can't slug with Brandon Rios. He hits too hard, too aggressive, you know, uh, does too much damage on the inside. Mike Alvarado's got to stay off the ropes and box. Use that jab, uh, double jabs, triple jabs, combinations, all that kind of stuff. Keep the fight in the middle of the ring and outbox Rios. That's his best chance to win. All right, and so just uh, so while we're here, you might as well talk a little bit about the Pascal Kovalov fight. So. Uh, yeah, uh, just just uh, if you want to just give a couple words about that and what the you know maybe the game plan is for each fighter. Sure, it's going to be an out and out war. Uh, I'm standing right next to Sergey Kovalev. I don't want him beating me up, but he's got su he's got some right hand. I mean, uh, he's going to try and he's going to try and do what he always does. Get uh, 
uh, get Jean Pascal out of there with a right hand because Jean is not the hardest guy in the world to hit. There's no question. On the other hand, Pascal's very rugged, you know, typical Haitian fighter. He originally comes from Haiti, even though he lives up in Montreal now. Uh, you know, he, he comes in low, he, he throws a lot of hard shots, he rips the body, uh, kills you on the inside, very strong, very aggressive, takes a great punch, only lost two fights in his life, he lost to Bernard and then, then he lost to Carl Frosch, you know, and uh, losing to two guys like that is no big crime because, you know, there's two great fighters. So uh, I, I think that Pascal will try to be aggressive, try to rough up Kovalev, try to, you know, bang to the body. On the other hand, Sergey, I think he's going to try and box a little and then set up Sean Pascal for that big right hand and get him out of there the way he gets everybody else yeah. out of there. Yeah. Is that a wise decision for them to, for Pascal to open up like that? Or, I mean, to, to you know, open up and go to kind of go to war with him or I mean oh yeah I, there's no doubt I, I think it, it's going to turn into a war I think Pascal's biggest chance is to do damage on the inside on the other hand Sergey's biggest chance is to get in the middle of the ring and whack him with that right hand yeah. so in other words it's going to be a great fight uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to a dynamite fight on January the 24th on HBO uh, great thank you so much Harold Evan Smith Fight Corner News thanks for having me Evan yeah thanks a lot thanks so much Harold see you inside yeah see you inside